This is going to be a short video showing a lock-in amplifier in a light-related experiment. So the overview is basically, uh, I'm going to talk about fluorescine, which uh, mostly is light-related properties, the emission and absorption frequencies. It's basically used in a lot of applications where you need to have a, a tracer dye, for example, in the eyes or in the heart or even for lead detection. I'll then briefly go over the stimulus so you could observe the modulation effects and uh, how the modulation is detected by the lock-in amplifier. And then I will just uh, give an overview of the lock-in amplifier experiment itself and then finally end with a demo. So this experiment is about using fluorescein with a lock-in amplifier to see its response to light signals. Fluorescein um, is a solution that responds to UV light. It absorbs light in, in the ultraviolet uh, region of the uh, light spectrum around uh, 490 to 500 nanometers or in, that in this particular case around 494 nanometers and re-emits uh, a light at a longer wavelength at 525 nanometers or thereabouts in the green spectrum. You do have other uh, output frequencies uh, depending on the type of material like red uh, uh, or yellow or whatever. But in this particular uh, experiment, I have uh, a green uh, emitting light from the fluorescein solution. So the way it looks is that um, the fluorescein will absorb light in a very narrow uh, frequency range in the UV spectrum. As you can see, the response is shown in blue over here. Uh, it peaks at 494 nanometers and gradually decays off and at around 500 or so, it's almost no absorption. Whereas it re-emits that same light um, at a lower wavelength, um, longer wavelength, or higher, lower frequency, at 525 nanometer, which is green in this case, and uh, it's uh, it's going to have, of course, a slightly lower amplitude because it's con uh, it's converting some of the energy that is received uh, from the ultraviolet uh, frequency to a lower uh, frequency. So that is uh, re-emitted light in the green spectrum. This shift in the frequency is called the Stokes shift. Um, this is something you can read about on various um, websites or even on Wikipedia, for example. So I'm going to use this property to basically um, to see if I can use this shifted light to to carry more some information in the in the light signal itself. So what we have here is a blue LED that is shining a light modulated light in the peak absorption uh, spectrum for the fluorescein, which will re-emit it in the um, green spectrum. So it basically, I'm going to add a 10 kilohertz and a 9 kilohertz signal to create an envelope, which is at 1 kilohertz, which is effectively the modulated output, which I want to detect using the lock-in amplifier. I could, of course, I could put any kind of signal in there. It could be a non-repetitive signal, but just to prove this uh, experiment, I'm going to use a, a fixed tone which will be a one kilohertz output tone, uh, which comes out of this thing. Now the blue LED also needs to be uh, biased. Uh, so I'm gonna use a 1.5 volt bias to create a constant light uh, at a certain signal strength. And on top of that, I'm gonna put a 100 millivolt uh, carrier at 10 kilohertz and then modulate that at nine kilohertz uh, at 50% depth uh, amplitude modulation. So that signal goes into the LED, it goes off uh, a few centimeters. Uh, it's incident upon this fluorescein um, uh, kind of a vial or flask or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then that uh, it reflects that light back into a photodiode sensor. The photodiode sensor converts this uh, reflected light uh, off the fluorescein into a current, which is then uh, detected by the lock-in amplifier and then amplified and then uh, the, it basically will try to lock, of course, to the 10 kilohertz, which is the carrier which is being sent as a reference to the lock-in, but it will be, uh, it will have a response to that uh, 9 kilohertz as well in terms of an AC output coming out of the lock-in. So the locking is happening at 10 kilohertz, but the output of the lock-in, or a, sorry, AMD modulator at uh, 1 kilohertz, which you will then observe on the oscilloscope as a 1 kilohertz sine wave. So the, basically you want to check that you are able to recover any information that you're transmitting through the blue LED back through this light and back into the lock-in and then displaying on an oscilloscope. What I have here is a LED, a blue LED shining light on a fluorescein solution. 
and I have a sensor, um, a photodiode, which is just above it, uh, as you can see over here. And that's output of that sensor is going to a lock-in amplifier, which is at the back over there. And I'm modulating the light source with the audio signal at uh, one kilohertz. And the basic uh, reference clock for this uh, LED light is at 10 kilohertz. So the modulation is at one kilohertz and the the carrier frequencies, if you will, is at 10 kilohertz. So what I expect from this is that the reflected light that comes off this fluorescent solution is going to be sensed by the lock-in amplifier and it will basically demodulate that output and uh, produce a, uh, the baseband signal, if you will, at 1 kilohertz, which can be observed on the oscilloscope. So here's the AWG output, which is a high frequency 10 kilohertz audio signal and there's a 9 kilohertz modulation on top of it which creates a 1 kilohertz uh, uh, baseband signal which is then going to be recovered by the lock-in amplifier and so looking at the output now um, that's the output coming from the lock-in amplifier which is the, the amplitude signal that is being the R signal that the lock-in amplifier is producing and that frequency as you can see is exactly one kilohertz and that's the sine wave that is uh, the modulating signal it's very clear and very clean uh, without any distortion um, so basically this is the light that the fluorescein is reflecting back onto the sensor now this is the output of the uh, lock and amplifier this is the the carrier signal which is at 57 nano amperes which is the current coming out of the the sensor, the photodiode sensor, the time constant is 50 microseconds, which means it's able to uh, be able to see the one kilohertz coming out. If I increase the time constant to a much longer value, that signal will start to get weaker or smaller as it gets filtered out more and more. So I'm going to try that, uh, increasing the time constant and see what happens. As you can see, as I increase the time constant to 500 microseconds, it's gone. And if I now bring it to 200 microseconds, which is about 5 kilohertz, you can see some uh, signal, but it's getting attenuated. If I increase, decrease the time constant to 100 microseconds, it's almost fully passing through. This is now 50 microseconds, which is what we had earlier. So the lock-in amplifier uh, output filter basically filters out the recovered uh, X or X and Y or R signal, the phase signal, whatever that you're looking at. Now I'm going to turn on the light in the room and you'll see that uh, for a moment the lock-in will lose lock and then it will hopefully come back and uh, readjust the DC levels so it can uh, detect the signal again. Uh, right now um, it's reading 57 nanoamps, 57.5. Now I'm going to turn on the lights in the room. So as you can see with the light turned on, um, the signal is died and it's still you can see the signal is coming off the highly now much more brighter environment but still the blue LED is shining light on that and here we have uh, the lock-in amplifier relocking in this new uh, lighting condition so basically the lock-in ignores the DC level of the light that is in the room and it's only responding to the frequency of interest which is the 10 kilohertz uh, signal that is being generated by the light, uh, LED light. And again, looking at the mod demodulated signal at 1 kilohertz, it looks uh, pretty good. I have to, let's see, clear sweeps. Okay, so we are back to the 1 kilohertz now. Um, one other thing I would like to show you is um, while we are here, um, is to replace this um, fluorescein with um, just a regular dyed solution which is green dye and see what happens um, now with the green dye signal there's no signal coming back so it's almost zero 0.78 nano amperes and the nothing is getting out of the lock-in in terms of the demodulated signal either so this is interesting to see that um, that the fluorescein signal reflects back the complete um, information that is there in the light back uh, into the environment so any 
detector that can uh, detect uh, this particular 10 kilohertz signal will be able to demodulate it and it's a potential application one can think of. So here's a wild thought. So can we use uh, this particular technique to send information across a large area? For example, shine a UV light with modulated information onto uh, and project it onto some screen which is UV sensitive and you have a bunch of receivers that can pick up the signal and uh, produce uh, the demodulated output which can drive um, various kinds of signals outputs like audio or other kind of information. I guess this is something to think about. So this ends this video and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.